production of the Mississippi State University Extension Service. Today on Farm Week, we have two feature stories for you. We've all heard a lot about gluten-free foods, but what does it mean and should you be worried about it? We'll have two Southern Gardening segments today. Shady landscapes don't have to be boring. The right plants and some yard art can make a big difference. And want to make a statement to your house guest? Greet them with a great mailbox garden. Our last story today is about the home place sale held each August in Mississippi. It helps small part-time cattlemen to maximize their profits and the cattle never see a sale barn except on video. The first year, I figured I made $43 extra when I looked at the commission and the shrink. The next year, we ended up with $83 extra per animal. And then last year, we had $111. Good day everyone, I'm Leighton Spann. And I'm Artis Ford. Welcome to a feature story edition of Farm Week. Well, if you're like me, you've heard of gluten-free, but you probably wondered, what is gluten and why do I want to be free of it? Well, gluten is a naturally occurring protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. For 1% of the population, gluten is a problem. They have what is known as celiac disease, an autoimmune condition. It's not a food allergy, but if you have celiac disease, you want to avoid gluten. And that's harder than you think. A lot of products other than wheat items contain gluten, but the task is getting easier. Surprisingly, gluten-free products can be bought by those not affected by the disease. Market to Market's Paul Yeager explains. Navigating the aisles of a grocery store is an easy task for most shoppers. Meat, dairy, produce, no problem. But for an increasing number of consumers, finding foods that fit their gluten-free diet is difficult. Alex Lemke knows the struggle. I found out I was celiac uh, several years ago. She's been gluten-free for several years after being diagnosed with celiac disease, a condition that damages the lining of the small intestine. The first challenge is realizing that gluten is in so many products that you would have never, ever guessed. Um, so that's frustrating. Things, it, it just would surprise you where, where it turns up. Gluten may seem easy to escape, but it's found in more products than just sliced bread and cereal. It turns up in unexpected items from salad dressings to taco seasoning and can even be found in the candy aisle. Emily Galazi knows this all too well. The 17-year-old was recently diagnosed with celiac disease and is the only one of her siblings restricted to a gluten-free diet. It's really hard because you have to make two separate meals and you have to have two separate bags of chips, two just separate snacks. And it's hard to have breakfast in the morning because if you want toast, you have a different toaster. Gluten, a protein found in processed foods made from wheat, barley, and rye, has always caused problems for those who suffer from celiac disease. But in recent years, many consumers who do not have celiac disease have also embraced gluten-free diets. A study by Packaged Facts, a leading consumer research firm, found that nearly half of those who buy gluten-free products do so because they perceive the products to be generally healthier. Other consumers use gluten-free foods as a method of weight management or because they think the products are of higher quality. I have a lot of friends that um, choose to just follow a wheat-free lifestyle because they feel better, um, feel like they look better, it helps keep their weight down. With greater demand for gluten-free products, the industry is booming, growing 28% over the past four years. And by the end of 2012, the U.S. market for gluten-free foods is expected to exceed $4 billion annually. Niche gluten-free brands are growing dramatically, and major food manufacturers are catching on, offering classic brands in new gluten-free options. Grocery chains like Midwest giant Hy-Vee 
are making the gluten-free shopper's trip to the grocery store a little easier. Hy-V has seen a 22% company-wide increase in gluten-free product sales in the past two years, according to Director of Health and Wellness Julie McMillan. So we've expanded these sections by a ton. Um, generally, we were anywhere from a few hundred items, gluten-free items, and now we're thousands of gluten-free items that we offer our customers. She says that Hy-Vee listens to its customers to determine what their needs and wants are, even if that means redesigning the store. We've also gone as far as separating it out for the consumers, so it makes their shopping experience a little easier. They're able to just go to one section in the store and make it a one-stop shop for them. Each Hy-Vee store has different gluten-free offerings, depending on the demands at varying locations, but labeling is always important. Over the past couple of years, Hy-Vee's really focused on um, making it easier for that gluten-free shopper. So we've added shelf talkers um, that really highlight the products themselves. And then we've pulled out the products from the mainstream line and put them into sections where we call out that specific section. So some things you wouldn't normally think about a gluten-free shopper missing would be like cakes and cookies and brownies. So we put them all into one section where the gluten-free shopper can easily find that chocolate cake that they've been missing out on. After being told what they cannot eat, Lemke and Galazi say it's refreshing to see so many items they can eat. They've actually allowed me to live a better, more enjoyable life. Uh, it's really easy now to come in and pick up anything I need um, and make just a normal traditional dish. You know, they know that the product's safe and it is for sure gluten-free. They're not having to take the time to dissect the label because we're kind of doing that for them. Especially all the brownies and cakes and stuff. So you feel like if it's your birthday, you can just get that. Or Christmas, you can just make a pie. Or... So it's easier. It makes you feel better that there's more options. Package Facts estimates that only 10% of consumers purchasing gluten-free items do so because they or another family member have celiac disease. And that is prompting some critics to wonder if the growth in the gluten-free foods is just a fad. But Hy-Vee officials believe the trend is here to stay. You know, when we see individuals that go on a gluten-free diet and have the results and the benefits, literally they're life-changing. So once they've had those, that positive impact, they're not gonna they're not gonna change their diet back. For market to market, I'm Paul Yeager. And you can watch this story again on gluten-free foods on the Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on YouTube and Facebook. We'll have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the story as well and read the script. That's farmweek.msucares.com. It's time now for today's trivia quiz on Farm Week, and this week it's about the number of farm operations in Mississippi in 2012. Now remember, the U.S. Department of Agriculture says any operation is a farm that sells at least $1,000 worth of ag products. So the question, how many farm operations were there last year in Mississippi? 17,100, 26,300, 33,600, or 42,300? We'll have the answer after today's Southern Gardening segments. Well, sometimes homeowners think that gardening in the shade can be boring. Well, in our first Southern Gardening segment today, Extension Horticulturist Dr. Gary Bachman shows us how to use shade annuals, foliage plants, and garden art to create interest in the landscape. When speaking to home gardeners, many struggle with growing plants in the shade. But my friend Linda successfully grows gardens to maximize the shady areas of her yard. Shade creates a microclimate that offers advantages and challenges. Good choices for shady conditions include the ever popular hosta, which should be grown in the shade in South Mississippi. Impatience also need to be grown in the full shade and add splashes of color to this border. Now a plant I don't think is used near enough is polka dot plant, whose splattered leaves remind me of a painter shaking excess paint from his brush. And I really like the use of the rough cut field stone to define the edge of this shady planting. A more natural woodland setting can be achieved in the shady landscape. 
Linda has used bronze woodland fern and evergreen giant liriope, which can both grow to over two feet tall as the foundation plants around her gazebo. Late season color will be provided by the Shishi Gashira and Leslie Ann Camellias and butterfly bush Budlia Davidi. But there are times when the shady landscape doesn't need any help from colorful plants. Linda has created interest in this bed using garden art. The large evergreen shrubs Cliera and Indian Hawthorn provide a deep, rich background for the various birdhouses and bottle tree that add colorful character. And all gardeners know armadillos are unwanted landscape visitors. But who could resist having this armadillo sculpture standing watch in the shade? There are many options for the creative gardener to have it made in the shade. I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman for Southern Gardening. The mailbox is often the first thing people see at your house. In our second Southern Gardening segment today, Gary shows us how some gardeners are making a roadside statement about their properties. As I walk around my neighborhood, I can't help but enjoy the mailbox gardens. A beautiful display planted around the mailbox announces to the world that a gardener lives here. A trend in newer subdivisions is to include planting beds around the mailboxes for landscaping. The planting areas are convenient and there are lots of effective and attractive plant choices. Planting climbing plants that behave themselves are good choices. Here, Mandevilla, sometimes called Diplodenia, has begun its climb on its trellis and will provide color all summer. Confederate jasmine can be trained as a mailbox companion. In the late spring and early summer, small star-like flowers are sweetly scented. Planting near the street can be challenging with the high heat load. Try plants like this lantana, which will tolerate the hot conditions better than most. And don't forget about multi-season plantings for mailbox gardening. Telstar Dianthus is a colorful choice for spring and early summer. When the weather starts changing in the fall, ornamental kale will continue the colorful show. The post office does have guidelines about planting around your mailbox. The carrier certainly doesn't want to hack through a jungle to deliver your favorite gardening catalog. Having a nice garden around your mailbox can enhance any landscape, no matter what awaits you inside. I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman for Southern Gardening. Gary says to pay attention to your mailbox, a mailbox garden can make a strong statement about the owner of the house. Well, it's time for the answer to today's trivia quiz on Farm Week. Again, it's about how many farm operations there are in Mississippi, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Well, how many are there? The answer is 42,300. Interestingly enough, 26,300 of those had sales between $1,000 and $10,000 in 2012. We're going to pause now for a break on farm weight. Coming up, we'll add the calendar and one more feature story for you. See how part-time cow-calf producers in Mississippi are finding there is strength and profit when they work together. From our family to yours, Mississippi's farmers believe the best produce and livestock are grown right here at home. With ms.foodsearcher.com, you're only a click away. Using your smartphone, you'll be connected to hundreds of families and small businesses dedicated to providing you with fresh local foods. Produce, meats, fish, dairy, agritourism, community markets, and more are right at your fingertips no matter where you are. ms.foodsearcher.com. Before we get back to our last story, let's look at the Farm Week calendar. The Southern Sustainable Ag Working Group, Southern Sustainable Research and Education, and the USDA's National, excuse me, Natural Resources Conservation Service are sponsoring four organic and hoop house production workshops. This is for natural resource personnel who are working with farmers interested in organic or high tunnel production. Farmers who serve as mentors or trainers to other farmers are welcome. The workshop is free, but please call to say you're coming so they can reserve you a plate lunch. Monday, June 17th, go to the demonstration farm of the Alliance for Sustainable Production. That's at Goodman, Mississippi. 
Tuesday, June 18th, the workshop moves to the Danny Daniels Farm on Zero Road at Meridian. Thursday, June 20th, the workshop will be at the Peggy Hall Farm on Shady Grove Road at Pontotoc. And the last one will be held Friday, June 21st at the Francis Flowers and Herbs Farm on Williams Road at Pickens. So go to our Farm Week website at farmweek.msucares.com for information on these and other events. Now check out this week's Farm Week Snapshot. The next Mississippi Home Place producer sale takes place Monday, August 5th in Hattiesburg. More than 2,000 calves are slated to sell that Monday, but none of them will actually be in the sale barn. The Mississippi State University Extension Service partners with several organizations to make this annual event happen. Cattle producers as well as cattle buyers say this particular video auction is always advantageous to them. It's also beneficial to the cattle being sold. Our story takes us to visit producers in Philadelphia and Macon, as well as to the sales arena in Hattiesburg. This story first aired on Farm Week last year. When it comes to marketing cattle, being able to sell in 50,000 pound load lots or in uniform groups puts the most money back in a producer's pocket. But it's not practical for most Mississippi farmers to do on their own. The main thing is, you know, very few cattlemen in the state have the ability to put together a truckload of, of calves by themselves. That's why the Extension Service partnered with Farm Bureau, the Beef Cattle Improvement Association, and the Cattlemen's Association to create another marketing option, the Mississippi Home Place Producer Sale. If you don't have a partner, if, you know, if, if you've got 20 or 30, 40 calves you need to sell, you, you can contact uh, John Kilgore, Mike Keene, any of the extension guys or Farm Bureau, and, and they will work with you to find somebody that your calves match up with. You don't necessarily have to find it yourself. Yeah, the agents work with the producers in their particular counties or uh, the area agents work with uh, uh, producers maybe spread over several counties and uh, try to put the cattle together that are the like kind and quality and muscle and type and to make a 50,000 pound load. In Johnny Thompson's case, he partnered with another Neshoba County producer, Shelby Beeson. Together, they formed a uniform load of cattle for the 2011 Home Place producer sale. Uh, me and the, um, Johnny in this instance, uh, we have to work together to, to, to run same, the same type bulls, uh, calf in a shorter window of time, and to, to try to get as uniform a calf as we can. And then when we wean and precondition, uh, we try to d uh, do it alike and do it at the same time so that the cattle um, will be, will be as, as close to have the same health um, protocol. We co-mingled them at, at weaning. Um, it, it's, Johnny has a better facility here for mixing uh, feed and feeding. It. So by being able to co-mingle your calves and put them in the sale, it allows the smaller producers to be able to take advantage of the, the price advantage of being able to sell in the truckload sales. Consignments to the home place sale are usually due in June each year. The actual auction occurs each August at Southeast Mississippi Livestock in Hattiesburg, and the event is managed as a board sale. Unlike traditional livestock auctions, there are no cattle moving across the floor of the sale barn. The cattle are still on their home farms. Buyers are looking at livestock on video screens on the wall and placing their bids. The auction is also streamed live on the internet by the extension service. The video of each lot was available to view before the sale on an internet website along with a written description of the cattle. This type of sale is attractive to buyers because it is a much more efficient way to do business and saves them lots of time. And, and, and those buyers, we're going to sit there and sell 30 to 40 truckloads of calves in an hour or hour and a half where normally it would take them weeks to put those cattle together out at the sale barns buying them one at a time. So it's a big time saving for them. The fact that cattle are not actually on site for the auction makes things easier for the stockyard. 
which adds to the price advantage the home place sale can offer to producers. Well, we are able to sell the cattle at, at, at a discount commission for them. Uh, there's less uh, handling and, and uh, labor involved in the, in, the, in the board sale cattle, which a lot of them shipped off the farm and uh, a lot of our help is, is, is not involved. That enables us to sell them a little cheaper for them, and which puts a little more money back in their pocket. If you go to the local sale, they're going to charge you about a five and a half percent commission, yardage, insurance. You know, they have to make money to stay in business. With a home place sale, we take a flat two percent commission. That's what the sale barn of Hattiesburg gets is 2% to handle all the transactions. Cattleman Jacob McGeehee of Macon has sold livestock in every one of the home place sales. The 2011 auction was the fourth one in the history of the event. McGeehee vividly remembers his involvement in the very first one. Our first sale, I didn't have a complete load. I co-mingled with the uh, Parade Experiment Station and Mike Howell, and, and we put together a load and we loaded out up at uh, our Prairie Experiment Station. But that made a believer of me. McGeehee says he likes to put together a load of steers all the same color, with 100 pounds or less variation from lightest to heaviest. In 2011, his big steers averaged 886 pounds. The Macon farmer says each year of the home place sale, he makes a little more money per head. The first year, I figured I made $43 extra when I looked at the commission and the shrink. The next year, we ended up with $83 extra per animal. And then last year, we had $111. Johnny Thompson and Shelby Beeson of Philadelphia also feel like the home place producer sale is a worthwhile option for marketing feeder cattle in Mississippi. The way I figured it, the, the shrinks, commissions, and, and other things by putting together the truckload sales, I figure it's worth, you know, seven to eight cents a, a pound uh, for every pound we put in this sale versus, you know, going to the local sale barn. Uh, and that, that amounts up on a 50,000 pound load of calves. Well, it was just an alternative market to where I could add value to my cattle and, and be paid for what I've, extra things that I've done. Um, preconditioning, do it, uh, giving them their vaccines, um, and then being able to combine them with uh, other growers to, to have a truckload lot for a buyer to buy. Since the cattle are not brought to the auction for the home place sale, feeder calves that might not be ready to ship on a certain day can be accommodated due to the fact there's some flexibility in arranging future delivery. Some calves will be shipped from their home farm soon after the sale, and some calves will be shipped at an agreed upon later date, depending on target weights. These calves are being shipped from McGeehee Cattle Company in Macon about six weeks after the sale. When the loadout date arrives, the home place sale provides electronic scales on site at the loadout location, which are used as the cattle are being put into the truck. The entire process ensures accuracy, and buyers know they are getting top quality cattle that haven't experienced the stress and health challenges that come from mixing with other livestock in a public sale. As long as the people are doing the hard work with the cattle and making them better and making them uniform and uh, extension service and Farm Bureau people work with us, this, this thing, uh, We'll just grow and grow, I think. The fourth annual Home Place Producer Sale in 2011 featured over 3,500 head of cattle in 43 loads. The sale generated over $2.8 million in total receipts. We're getting a little bit, a little more money for the cattle, but we're also reducing expenses. So um, we feel like our producers are putting a few positive dollars in their pocket, and and uh, with the high cost of all the other inputs that they in the cattle industry today, that's helping out. From Hattiesburg, Mississippi, I'm Leighton Span reporting. Go to our Farm Week website if you would like to see this story again, farmweek.msucares.com. You can also see it on YouTube and Facebook, and we'll have the links there and telephone numbers if you're interested in taking part in this year's sale. Again, the date is Monday, August 5th at the same location, the Southeast Livestock Producer Sale Barn on Highway 49 North in Hattiesburg, 
and the deadline for consigning calves to the sale this year is on June 28th. And artists Shelby Beeson and Johnny Thompson are not consigning anything this year due to some changes in their operations. Jake McGeehee will have a 50,000 pound load of cattle in the sale. Good to know it's doing well for them. Well, we are at the end of Farm Week for this week. On our next show, meet Tim Mahan, the President Mississippi Forestry Association Outstanding Logger of the Year. Mahan and his wife have a somewhat unusual story. They didn't come from logging families. They got into the business as adults. The Mahans are well known for their environmentally sensitive work ethic. In Southern Gardening, how to make your own summer baskets. If you'd like further information on a Farm Week story, our address is Farm Week Box 9625, Mississippi State, Mississippi 39762. That's Box 9625, Mississippi State, Mississippi 39762. Our telephone number is area code 662-325-2262. That's 662-325-2262. You can also contact us through your county office of the Mississippi State University Extension Service. For the rest of the Farm crew, I'm Artis Ford. And I'm Leighton Spann. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.